We've been described as the worst England touring side in the history of any sport. I've never played that drum before. If you've come tonight for an in-depth review of the new scrum laws, you've turned up at the wrong show. Hello, everybody. Welcome along to this week's Le Putty Pod, brought to you by GBR and our very good friends at Continental Tyres. What a World Cup it has been, with so many stories from top to bottom, and one of the brightest and the most energetic and the most captivating has been the form of Uruguay. And it's an absolute pleasure to have their number eight joining us, Carlos Juice of the Los Terros team. Um, Carlos, lovely to see you. Thank you very much for coming on Good Bad Rugby, and what a result last night against Namibia. Tell us, first of all, what is the Uruguayan changing room like off the back of a bonus point win in the Rugby World Cup? How good were the celebrations? Nah, it was amazing to win with the bonus. We won uh, the the match that we came to to play uh, on the World Cup. It was amazing. Yeah, it was a brilliant match for the neutrals to watch as well. 50,000 in the stadium. Um, a scoreline which swung this way and that. You were 14 nil down early and then I think you were 11 points down in the second half as well. How did you stay calm? How did you get yourselves out of trouble? Uh, the, the crowd was amazing. The team was always always there, always present. And we, we knew that the match will take 80 minutes and uh, we, we knew that we have all in our hands to to make a win. Tell me about the philosophy of Uruguayan rugby. You play some amazing sort of attacking rugby. Tell me where that comes from. How do you like to play the game? Uh, That comes from our coach, head coach, uh, Esteban Meneses. We didn't want to come to the World Cup and only defence and uh, we wanted to come here and and show our, our game and show our 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 attack we came to this World Cup with hunger of, of playing and and attacking how important is it to be getting the attention of the rugby world not just in in Uruguay and I know that Andres uh, Villaseca your captain off the back of the game against France he said to the journalists where have you been why are you only coming after the game is there an importance for you that you are gaining recognition and respect across the world game rather than just in Uruguay? We need more of these competitions. We we come to the World Cup with playing, I don't know, a few matches of against Tier Uno, uh, Tier 1. And that is, for us is very difficult. We always play uh, uh, near to Uruguay, Brazil, uh, Paraguay. And we we think that we, we need more competitions for, for reaching yes. the World Cup with a uh, higher level. What would it mean to Uruguay to have a tier one team come and play on a tour? And for us or for the rugby union will be amazing that that things happen. Why is rugby in Uruguay getting so much better? I know World Rugby have invested a lot and you've got the South American uh, Super Rugby. You've got, you know, more access to coaches, etc, etc. How big an impact is that having? It has a a very big impact. Uh, uh, the the competition that is in the Super Rugby of Americas. Many of our our team of our players we play together all the year, and that for us is very important. Yeah, and just to finish, I, obviously you've got you, you want a game against Tier One teams. You're now taking on New Zealand, who are the greatest team that the game has ever had. Tell me what it means to you to be facing the All Blacks up next. I think that we, Uruguay, never play against New Zealand. It will be our first match in our history. And uh, and we we are very focused on doing our best match and trying to, to do all our best. Are you ready to face the hacker? Yes, yes. Uh, my friends, uh, say me that a lot on previous months. They always talk me about the Haga, the Haga, and I think that I'm prepared. New Zealand lost to France in game one by 14 points, and you lost to France in game two by 15 points. So the question is, 
Are you ready to shake the world again? I think that yes. I hope that yes, we we will we will give our best in that match and we will try to to shock the world again. Amazing. Listen, it's been very nice to chat, Carlos. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you for giving us a bit of insight into Uruguay and the rugby back home and, and what's motivated you out in France. And from everybody outside New Zealand, I think we can all say good luck when you take on the All Blacks and enjoy the rest of the tournament. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed. Vamos, Uruguay. Thank you to Carlos of Uruguay. Let's bring in Mike of Minch in Hampton. And we always have to start these calls by asking where on earth you are because every day is a different continent. Who are you? What's your name? Where, where are you this week? Well, I don't know if you can read the hat. It says Masters, which which must mean golf. So, yeah, I've just got into Rome and I've got a couple of days at the Ryder Cup to cheer on Europe. And then we right. might be heading back to Paris, but not for rugby. We might be going to a little horse race called the Pre de l'Arc de Triomphe. So, yeah, we're having a little little nice weekend of it. Why not? It's, eh? a, it's a hard knock life. Uh, for us. Right, it's time for Mystic Mike's predictions. We really should spend a bit of money on a bit of a jingle for this, but um, yeah, maybe yeah. that's for season two. I'm sure so, I'm oh, sure some Welshies will come up with some jingles for me after last week. Yeah, I think I think jingles are the least of your problems. Uh, the, 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 South, the, the South Africans have disappeared into the ether, and, yeah. uh, but, but I managed to upset the Welshies. You have, right. Mystic Mike's predictions in partnership with our good friends at City Index, the global provider of spread betting and CFD trading. Uh, you touched on the wording. Would you like to offer an apology? Would you like to um, a mayor culpa? How are you going to deal with look, the fact that all Wales fans have been wanting you to respond to their extraordinary win over Australia? And it was a, look, quiet. I'm not taking anything away from you. By the way, I want a Northern Hemisphere team and I want Northern Hemisphere teams to get as far as they can in this competition. I just right. fear, felt that Australia were play and in all fairness, were playing better than than Wales, and I thought they would get, they would turn it over. Plus, I was thinking ahead. I possibly didn't want England to play Fiji again. Everyone knows <laughs> why. Um, so I wanted that group to become a bit more carnage, and, and you know, we might have ended up with someone else. We could have also ended up with Wales. But um, no, fantastic first phase try, uh, and then just just crushed a, a toothless a toothless Australia. Um, so well yeah. done to Wales. They're through. They're into the quarterfinals. Yeah. Congratulations. And as I say. I want non-hemisphere teams to go as far as possible. I'm not like every other Celt who hates the English. I want us all to do well. If we don't yeah. win it, I want a non-hemisphere team to win it. Don't make me right. pick the order in which I would like them to win it, but there you go. Well, uh, so well done, is... Wales. Well done, well done Wales. Wales. I do still yeah. love you down there. I love you, Bucks. Right? <laughs> love you, Bucks. Western yeah. Mail, Ted Long knees in plead for mercy shame. Yes, or something indeed. similar. Uh, right, let's see who you're going to offend this week because we have picked out three games that we'd like you to have a little look at. New Zealand, Italy, Fiji, Georgia and Australia, Portugal. It couldn't, could it? Do you want to go with the All Blacks, Italy, <laughs> first of all? There has been so much hype around the Azzurri. They are ready. They are primed. Is this the moment or are the All Blacks just going to flex um, and do what they need to do? I think uh, New Zealand, obviously they haven't played for a little while, but they're going to come off... Uh, they're just going to come out all guns blazing and I... I think they run away quite comfortable. Um, I'm not saying that Italy won't offer anything because they generally they do offer stuff uh, in all the games we've seen since the Six Nations. So, but I still I would expect New Zealand to run away 30, 35 point winners. Okay, thirty five. I'll take that. Uh, Fiji against Georgia. I did see something very funny online, which someone had put out, which is imagine if Fiji blow their games against Georgia um, and Portugal. Australia sneak through, win the tournament, and then there's going to be some French egg on faces, they said. But... Do, uh, do you know what? I, I actually had a little bit of, you know, in, whilst I was on the plane and not really concentrating, and don't, I was like, just imagine if Georgia pull, because it's just, they're, yeah. they're defensively really solid. They'll attack breakdowns. They're just big, strong men, set-piece based. It's probably Fiji's nightmare of, a, of, of an opposition. Yeah. But I, I can't, this this Fijian team deserve better. They deserve us to respect them more to say that they've knocked over. They could have knocked over Wales, could have should have. They knocked over Australia. They've knocked over England in the warm ups. They're going to knock over Georgia, and I think comfortably. I think the bookies have it around sixteen. I think it's going to be twenty twenty two twenty two twenty two. I wrote down I wrote down twenty. Watch this space, and then. The one that the world will stop to watch. Poor old Eddie, I've got a friend in Australia who's just sent me a note saying he's been on the front page 
of the biggest newspaper in Australia for the last two consecutive days, which wouldn't have happened even if they'd won the tournament. So they are turning <laughs> in on themselves down there. Portugal. The Chibra boys are helping them out there. The Chibra boys are, you know, they're, they're, they're holding Australian rugby to account. Yeah. Can um, can the impossible happen or Australia? No chance. Out? No chance. No, okay. I, I, right. Look, I think take away that second half against Wales where they were awful. They have to sort out their discipline. The discipline has been brutal. You know, they didn't. Wales, no disrespect to Wales, again, that they didn't have to do anything because of the penalties that uh, that Australia gave away in the positions. It was just easy fodder for Gareth Anscombe to knock over. Um, you know, obviously they, you know, and the second try, you know, a prop could have chipped that over. There was no one in the backfield. I don't, I, I still don't understand how where uh, Callaway was, but anyway. Um, so if they if they play like that, well, Portugal might have a chance, but I I can't see it. I think, um, you know, I think the spread is tw- uh, it's only twenty three. So Australia oh. to beat Portugal by only twenty three, oh. and you know you've got I, I think there's too much class, and they've got, they they have to deliver something. They they can't go out. You know, we go back to you know twenty fifteen when Wales knocked out England, well than Wales. Um, and we had that. I think it was Uruguay was our last game. Was it? Was it the yeah, last it was. game at the, at yeah. the Etihad in Manchester? Uh, yeah. You've got to go out and you've got to play for something. And I think you know the the boys there. They'll be hurting. They'll know that. And um, you know, I, I think it should. Uh, what are we going to say that it is though? Come on, Tyndall, pick something out. I would be disappointed for the for them if they don't put. Uh, what were we going to say? Come on. Okay, I'm going to say Australia will win by 42. I've been 42 for oh, 10 ball. I've already gone. Oh. Are, you, are you sticking? You've got to lock yeah, it I'm in. St- I'm, I'm yeah, sticking. Okay. I've got to be aggressive. I'll take the abuse, but come back firing. Yeah. Portugal up in arms at Tyndall Slight. Yeah, uh, exactly. is the headline in the Lisbon Daily Times. Right, very quickly, would you like to give shout-outs to the performer of the week and those who are doing well in our Super Brew League, um, in which we are plumbing new depths, <laughs> which is embarrassing. I, uh, yeah. Yes, I would like to. I want to give a quick shout-out to all the performers. Well, not all of them. Sorry. I'll give the performer of the week, which is Dan Lennox, uh, who was top of the leaderboard after round three. The Frigilicious was in second, <laughs> which is a great name. And Heathy, yeah. who's digging in there. Heathy has been in there in the mix for the whole of the three rounds. Uh, but right. if you do want to still get involved, everyone, uh, then please head over to superbrew.com forward slash GBR and get and get involved. And you'll easily beat us. So uh, just challenge to be yeah. top of the week. Come and take the glory. So we have tidied things up with Wales, we hope. We have offended Portugal. Just a quick word on the, the overall... Levels of fandom around uh, Super Brew and and the Rugby World Cup at the moment. Are you are you feeling a bit of heat at the moment? Are we all, are we all friends in, in love and rugby, or are we we're quite tribal at the moment? Well, I think we're all right, aren't we? I think so. Yeah, I hope so. I just I definitely there's been a lot coming through on the um, on the teleprompter <laughs> about how how you've irritated the Welsh. But I, I think we've well, hopefully no, put that to bed. No, Do you I, feel you've no. repaired relations? No, look, I think I think we're there to you they're always there to be knocked knocked at, you know, and the amount of sappers who were like, What am I smoking? So, uh, you know, I, I took a little bit of time to go back to a few people on Instagram who told me I didn't know what I talked about when I called the Island game absolutely perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um and I, yeah, you know, and this week I that the Welsh team was the only one I got wrong and I got it catastrophically wrong. But you yeah. see, the ones I've got wrong are when I've done it with my heart and where I want it to go because of what it creates for England and I didn't really want England to play Fiji again and in the first in the South Africa Scotland game I really yeah. wanted I really felt Scotland could do it did I actually believe it possibly not but I wanted to I wanted to believe it so from yeah. now on I'm going to go actually what I what I actually with what the head think? rather than yeah. the heart yeah well done Tins yes yeah, superbrew.com for slash GBR for that just a little bonus ball for City Index who wins the Ryder Cup um, look, I've got you know they haven't come over here and won in. 30, I think it's thirty years. You have to someone would have to check. Someone could check me and shout me out on that as well if they want to. Sure, they will. Um, but I think 
I think we're we're going to win. I, I've got a couple of, uh, I've got a, uh, for the first time, I've got a little bit of doubt in there, but um, I'm going to believe. I'm going to stay a believer, and I'm going to cheer them on. I, I might even just try and get on there somewhere, see if you can see me on TV. Something I'll dive in the background, or I'll go see Di Doherty on the thing, see if I can get my swing analysed or something. I'll try and find, find something to do. But I know I think they, I think they're going to romp it home in Italy. Um, I'm quite looking forward to getting out there and seeing the course actually. So that'll good. Be good. Thank you for checking in. Nice to see you. It's always a pleasure. Uh, Tins back with us in France in a few days' time. Thank you to Continental Tyres for their continued support. We will see you again very soon. Enjoy all the rugby for now. Bye-bye. Bye. What's the opposite of humble? Haskell. Get Haskell. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>